Everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love. Revival love. Supernatural love. Jesus is love. Welcome to Everlasting Love. My name's Patricia King, and I'm glad that you've joined us for today's program because I have a message to share with you about a coming revival. I've seen it in the Spirit. It's so alive. It's so real to me. I know it's coming, and I, I believe it's going to come soon. I believe it's going to come in our lifetime. You know, um, the Lord showed me this, this um, insight about the tsunami. You know the tsunami wave, it just doesn't come in like a big surf wave. It comes in actually by a disturbance in the deep, creating currents in the deep, usually from an earthquake. And then the water level rises up, 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 and literally overtakes the land. And I was watching a movie actually on my way back from a ministry trip, and it was just a phenomenal picture of how that water level just goes and takes over. And when a tsunami comes, nobody can resist it. I mean, it takes you. You don't take it. And the Lord says, a coming move of my spirit is on its way that no one will be able to resist. It'll be the greatest move of God in all of the history of church and maybe even the all of biblical history. And you and I might be in the very day that that comes forth. And the Lord showed me that it's going to be all about the fire of God. So I'm going to explain some of that to you and teach you a little bit about the fire in this particular program. But before I do, I want to review a few prophecies from, from men of God who have had words back years ago. And one of them is Smith Wigglesworth. He had this vision back in the 1940s. And as he described it to Lester Summerall, he says this, I see the greatest revival in the history of mankind coming to planet Earth. Uncountable multitudes will be saved. Nobody will be able to count those who come to Jesus Christ. No disease will be able to stand before God's people. I see whole hospitals emptied. Even the doctors are running down the streets shouting. It will be a worldwide situation, not local. A worldwide thrust of God's power and God's anointing upon mankind. That's amazing. When I, when I heard about that vision, I thought, Lord, I can see it. I believe it. I believe that this end time revival is going to be just like that, where many, many souls are going to come into the kingdom all at once. Are you ready for the greatest harvest that has ever come to planet Earth? You know, another respected minister, a man of God who I love, is Bob Jones. He's a prophet, and he's in his 80s at the time of this recording. And he has served the Lord well. But in 1975, Bob Jones actually died, and he went to heaven. When he stood before the Lord, the Lord said to him, Bob, did you learn to love? And he had to admit that he had never learned to love. And so the Lord says, I'm sending you back. I'm sending you back and, and, and I want you to teach the body how to love and equip them to know the things of the kingdom. But the Lord at that time showed him that he would see the beginning of a one billion soul harvest coming into the kingdom in one great wave in the end times. I believe that that is the moment that we are standing in right now. We are ready to see this harvest of souls come in. Now, I want to introduce you to an element that the Lord's been speaking to me about that is going to take place as this harvest unfolds. And if you have your Bibles handy, turn in them to Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. It says, as for me, and this is John the Baptist speaking, as for me, 
I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, John the Baptist was a great prophet. In fact, Jesus referred to him as the greatest prophet. And he made this prophecy concerning Jesus Christ, who would come with two specific baptisms and two individual baptisms, the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the baptism with fire. Now, in Acts chapter 1, we hear Jesus saying to his disciples, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But he did not say you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire, only the Holy Spirit. Then on the day of Pentecost, when we see the Spirit coming in fullness to everyone that was in the house, we see that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what baptism means. It means a complete immersion. It means to be completely filled, to be completely soaked, marinated. So they were all filled, every single one of them. It was a corporate outpouring of the Spirit at that time, all filled with the Holy Spirit. But they were not all baptized with fire. In fact, it says that there appeared to be tongues of fire resting on each of them. But resting upon them is not a baptism. It's not full immersion. Now, throughout church history, of course, there have been individuals who have experienced the baptism with fire. But never has there been a corporate baptism with fire that has hit the entire body. Not like in the day, days of Pentecost where, where after they got filled with the Holy Spirit, on that very same day, 3,000 in that one location were added to the church because of the power of the Spirit. You see, in John's uh, prophecy, he said that two things would happen as a result of these two baptisms. Number one was that there would be a gathering of the wheat into the barn. That's souls being brought into the kingdom. That is what the baptism with the Holy Spirit is for. Jesus said that you will receive power, dunamis power, when you receive the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. In other words, to proclaim me to the nations. He said you'll start in Jerusalem, then Judea, Samaria, even to the remotest parts of the earth. And so that's the ingathering. For 2,000 years now, through this baptism, this corporate baptism that came on the day of Pentecost, we have been empowered as the body to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Now, what I believe is going to happen in these end days is that there is going to be a corporate outpouring, a revival, so to speak, of a sovereign move of the Spirit of God for those who are seeking and speaking concerning this word that John the Baptist prophesied 2,000 years ago. And when this baptism comes, it is going to be so awesome that the power of the Spirit will come in fire and purge us of all the dross in our life. Now, like I've said, there have been individuals who have already experienced this fire. In fact, we have had situations recently where in our meetings people have been receiving the fire. They felt the heat. They felt the flames. They felt the burnings of God being at work within them. They experience it as love burnings because God's fire is love. His fire is so massive and he meets us in love and fills us with love. And that love transforms us. That love burns up the dross. I'm going to take you now to a couple of testimonies where individuals have been baptized with fire or experienced the fire. And when we get back, we're going to talk a lot more about this corporate baptism, this tsunami revival that is about to come. 
We were doing a glory school here in Maricopa, and it was the, the final night, and before we went into activations, we were worshiping, and as we're singing to God and worshiping God, a lot of the songs are about the fire, and we're actually crying out for God to send his baptism of fire. We're crying out for him to come and just consume us with the fire of his love, and as we worship, the fire started to fall right there in the glory school, and people could feel it. They were feeling it on their bodies, on their hands, on their feet, on their head. They could smell it, and at one point, you could even see see the evidence of it. We looked out and with open eyes you could see this haze in the room like it was actually physically filling up with smoke even though there was absolutely no natural source for it. And what was really cool is as the fire fell and people felt it, they were, they were feeling like issues in their lives getting burned up and, and getting freedom and they could feel the all-consuming love of God for them and they were getting calls and commissions and receiving visions and impartations. It was a, it was a lot like what Moses and Isaiah and, and the Apostle John experienced when they encountered the fire of God or when they, they, they saw the Lord as the burning one. So I grew up in a conservative Jewish family in New Jersey and I was really hungry for, for God, for spiritual truth. And basically what occurred is I became a Jubu, kind of a Jewish New Ager, Jewish Buddhist, and I would go to synagogue and study Eastern philosophy and religion. And one day I was meditating and my soul left my body, it went to heaven and I had an encounter with God. And as I stood there in the presence of, of, of the Lord, I saw a king high and lifted up and no one needed to tell me who it was. I knew it was Yeshua, I knew it was Jesus. And I felt the fire and I felt the power and I felt the energy of heaven pulsating through my body. It was like every fiber of my being was reverberating and shaking with the fiery presence and, and power of heaven. And the Lord told me I was called to serve him and I came back to reality and I was in a state of euphoria and I knew I needed to find out who this Messiah was. I had my first encounter with the man of fire back in 08. I had locked myself in my bedroom for like three months straight and I would do like eight or more hours a day of worship because I just wanted to see his face. I just wanted to get to know him more than I ever had before. And I remember one day in the middle of it, as I'm pressing in, he said, today I'm going to let you just glimpse at my face for just a second. And so I, just, I started bawling and I went in to worship and pressed in and waited and then he appeared. And he came as the man of fire. His face was on fire, like it says in, in Revelations, where it talks about his eyes like a burning flame, but his face was shining like the sun. And what's the sun? It's a big ball of fire, and that's what it looked like. And as I began to consecrate myself to him, all of a sudden, my legs began to vibrate and shake. And I thought my legs had fallen asleep. So I'm, you know, I had no... I was standing, so there was no pressure on my legs, but I thought I had fallen asleep. Then I realized it wasn't that because it shot up my legs, up to my head, down through my arms, into my hands, and my body was being electrocuted. I felt like I was being electrocuted by a million uh, small volts of electricity hitting up my whole body. And the tingling sensation was so intense, I could not close my hand to make a fist. I mean, I could not, I tried, I was experimenting. At the same time, I was feeling this baptism of love, this love, liquid love came upon me, this fire of love, and I, and I just could not stop weeping, and I was making a scene. Here we are in the choir, you can imagine this choir, and here's this Asian kid in the back just bawling his eyes out as we're just singing this song. In fact, the youth pastor had to come and said, I don't know what's going on with you, but you gotta take it to the men's room, and patted me on the shoulder and dismissed me from the youth choir which I didn't care, I just didn't know what was going on. And there was no language at that time. It wasn't until two weeks later I was sharing this experience with one of my uh, friends who had just gotten saved, and he was more being discipled by his charismatic parents. And he said, oh, you got baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I said, what's that? <laughs> I was a little boy in a Kenneth Hagin meeting, and along with my mother and grandmother and my sister, when the pillar of fire, or the glory cloud, as Brother Hagee would call it, rolled into the meeting. And probably over a thousand people saw it, and I saw it as a child myself. That it began to come in like a fog that was a bright fog. And it rolled across the crowd, and it, as it got to the front of the church, um, 
it began to knock people on the floor like dominoes. I remember there was a prayer line happening and Brother Hagin stopped and said, I see the cloud of God coming. And so he kept praying for people. And then all of a sudden when the cloud got up to where the altar area was, where they were praying for the sick, um, the cloud touched the line of people. And when it touched them, they went down like dominoes, brrr, all the way, and no one caught them. And I can remember that as a child. That was probably one of the first times that I came into a personal understanding of the glory cloud or the pillar of fire or the light of God. John the Baptist foretold that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Partner with us and help birth revival in the nations of the earth. In appreciation of your support, Patricia King would like to bless you with the new CD teaching, Man of Fire, a gift for you with a donation of $20 or more. Call 866-980-5464 and accept television offer number 198 or go online to patriciaking.com to partner with us today. But something happening that moves men and women to the house of God. Something glorious is happening that all the forces of a hill will not be able to stop it. Well, I can't live another day without the fire of God. Healing now for the power of God. Heal this woman right now, Lord. This is your night to get out of that wheelchair. Literally thousands and thousands slain by the power of the Holy Spirit. My dear people, that's the revival that I believe in. Set yourself on fire and let the world come watch you burn. In 1544, there was a man of God called Philip Neri who experienced the fire. And it's an exciting story, and he told it to a historian named Bachi. And I want to read this for you now. I think that you'll be excited about what God did in this individual's life. It says, while Philip Neri was seeking the Holy Spirit and his gifts with great passion and earnestness, there appeared to him a globe of fire which entered into his mouth and lodged in his breast. He was suddenly surprised with such a fire of love that he was unable to bear it, and he threw himself down on the ground. He felt by the side of his heart a swelling about as big as a man's fist, but neither then nor afterwards was it attended with the slightest pain or wound. The cause of this swelling was discovered by the doctors who examined his body after death. The saint's heart had been dilated under the fire of love, and in order that it might have sufficient room to move, two of his ribs had been broken and curved in the form of an arch. That's amazing. Can you imagine being in a room as you're seeking God passionately, and all of a sudden this, this ball of fire shows up, goes inside your mouth, into your heart, your heart enlarges, and you are, you are changed, transformed. According to history, Philip Neri was a very loving man. He had been baptized in the fire of God's love and went about visiting people who were sick and infirm and people in his community sharing the love of God and the benevolence of God with them. You see, any move of the Spirit will bring about good fruit. We're about to see the greatest fruit, the greatest harvest ever in all of the history of mankind. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles right now to Malachi chapter 3, because I want to show you a little bit more about this fire and how it's coming. John the Baptist said that when the fire came, it would purge us of dross. It would, it would burn up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. And the prophet Malachi, he confirms this. In Malachi chapter 3, he says, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Now notice that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came suddenly to those who were seeking. 
The other night, we were having a, a time with our team, with our volunteers, and the Spirit of God was moving during worship. It was awesome. And one of our volunteers had this word from the Lord, and she said, I see this, this move of the Spirit coming, and the Lord says, if you will seek the fire and speak the fire, you will receive the fire. Seek the fire and speak the fire, and you will receive the fire. And that's basically what is happening here. It says, the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Now you are the temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He's going to clean us all up. Have you been struggling with something inside of yourself that you know is contrary to the will of God and the character of God? Well, when this fire comes, it's going to be burned up, just like dross is burned. It'll be burned up and it won't be an issue for you anymore. So you can start just focusing on Jesus and empowering his love in you now, seeking his goodness, seeking his fire, and the fire will take care of that for you. He goes on to say that he will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, so that they will present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. When this fire comes to you, you're going to be presenting offerings unto the Lord, the offering of your gifts, your talents, your time, all of that. You'll be serving him because the fire of love is going to make you so passionate and you'll be so purified that it'll all be given with the, with the right motive, with the right heart, with the, with the right actions. It's awesome. The fire will take care of it for you. Then we go down to Malachi chapter 4. It says, For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze, said the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Now this is an amazing word, because he's saying the evildoer is going to be burned up. It'll be consumed. You know, cancer is an evildoer. AIDS is an evildoer. Poverty is an evildoer. Gossip is an evildoer. You know, oftentimes we think of, you know, when evildoers mention that it means people and that. And of course, people make choices to do good or to do evil. But behind that, behind our actions, behind the temptation are demonic spirits. And I believe that God is going to take a fire to the evildoers that are creating things within our midst that are not representing heaven, that are not representing God. This is going to happen. And then in verse 2, it says, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from a stall. You will tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I am preparing, says the Lord of hosts. He says that there's an actual day that he's preparing. It's a day when the baptism of fire is it's going to be a global outpouring where the people of God will be purified and where the very things that are resisting, you know, health and wholeness and healing, they're going to be taken care of. The sun of righteousness, the sun is a ball of fire. It's going to come with healing. It's just like what Smith Wigglesworth prophesied. The, the hospitals are going to be emptied out. We've seen some of that already. In Cambodia, we saw a whole wing of a hospital emptied out with every sick person healed. When the fire comes, it'll burn up the dross of sickness and disease and poverty and, you know, the trafficking of souls. It's coming and we will see the King of Righteousness manifest and you can have this fire. Would you like to be inside of that fire? It's going to be so amazing. Now, there's another aspect I want to speak to you about and it's out of Isaiah 60 talks about the glory of God in the last days. But in Isaiah 60 verse 1, the prophet says, Arise and shine, because your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He talks about this day of darkness and gross darkness is upon the people. But in that day, the glory is going to manifest upon the people of God, and many are going to come. Nations and kings will come to the brightness of our rising. They're going to come to know Jesus. Our sons and daughters will be carried in our arms. It's going to be just amazing. But he says, arise and shine because your light has come. Now, one of the definitions of light is illumination that comes from fire. 
So when this fire comes, we'll be arising and shining and there's going to be this global harvest and God wants you to be a part of it. John the Baptist foretold that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Partner with us and help birth revival in the nations of the earth. In appreciation of your support, Patricia King would like to bless you with the new CD teaching, Man of Fire, a gift for you with a donation of $20 or more. Call 866-980-5464 and accept television offer number 198 or go online to patriciaking.com to partner with us today. But something happening that moves men and women to the house of God. Something glorious is happening that all the forces of a hill will not be able to stop it. Well, I can't live another day without the fire of God. He's not for the power of God. Heal this woman right now, Lord. This is your night to get out of that wheelchair. Literally thousands and thousands slain by the power of the Holy Spirit. My dear people, that's the revival that I believe in. Set yourself on fire and let the world come watch you burn. Do you want this fire in your life? Because if you want the fire, you can have the fire. How? It says, well, the Lord that you seek. If you seek him for the fire, he will give you the fire. Seek and you shall find. That's a, a continuous tense. You know in that scripture where it says, ask and it will be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be um, open for you. That means a, a constant continuous seeking. And so if you seek the Lord for this baptism with fire, you can have it and start proclaiming it. You know, men of God like Evan Roberts, who was one of the catalysts for the Welsh revival, which was, you know, a, a revival of holiness that spread all around the world. He'd been praying for 15 years for the fire of repentance to hit Wales, and it did. The Moravians, they were, they were prayer warriors, a hundred year prayer meeting that birthed the modern day missionary movement. Prayer, seeking the Lord, praying it and saying it. The baptism with fire is going to come to you and you will be used as a catalyst for the glory of God in this last days movement. You will see a billion souls come in maybe. You will see the greatest harvest ever come in because you will be a part of it. Remember this, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. And I'll see you next time. But something happening that moves men and women to the house of God. Something glorious is happening that all the forces of a hill will not be able to stop it. Well, I can't live another day without the fire of God. He's not for the power of God. Heal this woman right now, Lord. This is your night to get out of that wheelchair. Literally thousands and thousands slain by the power of the Holy Spirit. My dear people, that's the revival that I believe in. Set yourself on fire and let the world come watch you burn.